parents of Reddit, what is the most ingenious thing you've had to punish your kids for? Not me but a work colleague told this brilliant story just yesterday at lunch. Apparently his son was always getting in trouble in school for being a smart mouth, joking around, and just kind of being a general butt. School was calling and sending letters to him a lot. The son always said it was other kids pulling him into it, the teachers didn't like him, etc, etc. But my co-worker knew his son well enough that this wasn't the case. Said he tried punishing him in various ways but like a lot of kids like this. Once they get away from parents they act differently. So one day he takes him to school like normal, but parks the car and gets outside instead. The son is suspicious and surprised, asked him what he's doing. Co-worker says I know you're having so many problems in school with teachers and other kids, and I believe you, so I want to find out what's really going on, and I'm going to do it by sitting right behind you in class, and not just your first class, but every class. And tomorrow, the next day, and the day after that until I can see what's going on. He planned to take a week off from work, and had got permission from the school, who thought this was an excellent idea, to make this work. He said his son lasted two classes before he begged him not to come to any more. Co-worker left and he never had any problems with his son after that. Son graduated and is a functional member of society. Only acceptable form of helicopter parenting. Worked at a group home for a few years. During chore time, we always struggled to get a kiddo to volunteer to help clean the kitchen. But all of a sudden, one of our teens volunteered and was in there for about 30 minutes wiping down counters and sweeping. She did a great job and I know we took turns poking our heads in. Seemed legit. I'm working a double so meds and bedtime comes and she gets to bed with no issue and then I start to wonder what's going on. First she's volunteering to do the kitchen. Now she's in bed on time, hum. I call her out to go get her meds, since she rushed off to bed. Under her covers, peanut butter crackers, cheese its fruit snacks. She comes up the stairs again to her bedroom and sees me in her doorway. I tell her I know she took snacks from the kitchen and give her the speech about asking for food and she'll be given it. She doesn't need to hoard it. I then ask her why. Of all the snacks, she took the common ones though we just got an Oreos. Scooby snacks. Trail mix. She told me that she knew we kept track of stuff like that and she thought she had a better chance of getting away with it if she took the crappy snacks. I could not let her finish them because it was late and she had had her meds and 9 other kids would have lost their crap if I let her. But she got to finish them as snacks the next day, while everyone else had cookies. When I was 4, I was eating all the raspberries from the garden bush. I was told I was not allowed to take any more. A 12 year old was around. I asked him to take some for me because they were too far away. So I got me a nice big handful. When I was caught eating some shortly after, I was scolded for having picked more raspberries. Then immediately pointed to the kid and said, I did not pick any. He gave them to me. Yeah, he asked me. Didn't break any rules. Got raspberries. Got scolded. Still won. Just yesterday, I caught my 3 yo making herself eggs. We were working outside, and we put on Sesame Street for her. Usually keeps her occupied for enough time to get some heavy work done. My sir went into the house to find her. Chair pushed up to the stove, eggs in the egg pan. She was even using the right spatula so as not to scratch the egg pan. She had cracked two eggs, perfectly, into the pan. She set the shells into one another neatly on the cutting board. No shells in the pan. She was at the stove stirring the eggs. Hand on the knob and about to turn on the gas. I was so proud of her. But yeah, now we can't leave her alone for 30 minutes anymore. So that kinda sucks. No you totally can. Just make sure you stock the house with things she can cook. When I was her age my mom taught me to sprinkle shredded cheese on a tortilla and microwave for 25 seconds. Wasn't long enough to make it too hot to handle and I felt so badass because I could cook for myself. Also take off your stove knobs. Not a parent, but my friend got grounded for a whole year when he got suspended from school for writing running a program to install Halo 1 on the network of school computers. He was grounded further when his parents found out he was making hundreds of dollars by running a RuneScape private server. He was a few years younger than me, and no older than 16 at the time. Kid is smart as heck. Obligatory not a parent disclaimer. My nephew, 3, is an extremely slow eater. 
because he sits there talking instead of eating, and his mom was trying to get him to speed up by putting a stop clock next to him whilst he ate. I was skyping with them one day during dinner time and I noticed every time she turned around, he would pause the clock and then start it again before she turned back. Hope you didn't call out on that brilliant kid. Well, we didn't really punish him because he was only two. He was using his magnetic alphabet letters to open the child locks on the cupboards. We had those locks that held closed by magnets and could only be opened with a magnetic key. When I was 9 I got caught stealing stickers and manipulating the teaching staff. I'd ask to go to the bathroom during lunch and sneak into the classroom and knew exactly where in the desk she kept them. This was to trick the school into thinking I won lucky plate. If you had a sticker under your lunch tray you won a prize. After the fourth day of winning in a row, the principal caught on and suspended me for a few days. My parents weren't thrilled but also agreed exploiting a lottery system was impressive for my age. <laughs> oh. God. Mine set up a sort of trading hub at school. We had. Still have. A discount shop in town. The 99p store. These days it sells some real crap. But a dozen years ago. And more. It had all sorts of bankrupt stock bargains in there. Sweets. Drinks. You name it. My kid would save his pocket money. Take a large knapsack. And stagger back under a humongous load of stuff. I remember the Power Raid 99p for a 6 pack. And all this stuff would be clandestinely sold at school. Undercutting the school shop along the way. He got caught. Of course. I think the bubblegum was his downfall. It got stuck to everything. And enquiries were made. So it all went quiet for a few weeks, and then I got home from work and my wife said, Mr. Shine Jr. has something to tell you, and there was the kid with the guiltiest hangdog expression you ever saw, I've been excluded from school for a week, what for? For selling my stuff, you've been continuing to do it, you silly sod, oh well, it's not the crime of the century, but don't do it again, you hear, they'll be looking out for you, and then a crafty look came over his little face. That's okay. I can get my third parties to do it for me. You're what? Too young to know the word distributors. But it turned out that he'd worked it out himself. That it was easier and quicker to pass bulk stock over to other kids and let them sell it for him in exchange for a percentage. A punishment was a minor stoppage of pocket money, as I recall. So nothing too serious, partly because at this point I cracked up and started laughing out loud instead of playing the outrage parent. Could have been worse. Could have been Crystal M. I've done this in high school. My locker was like a little gas station. I'd go to Costco and buy huge stride and 5 gum packs, energy drinks, sodas, chocolate, candies and I made a huge profit. It paid my lunches for the whole year plus extra pocket money. The hall monitors kinda knew but never snitched on me. Those were the days. Not a parent, but rather the story is about me. When I was in high school. The school had an automated phone system that would call your house saying which periods you had missed. Some days I could get home and answer the phone, or delete the voicemail the school had left without my parents being the wiser. But not every time. One day I had skipped school and came home tk to very angry parents. I was told the school has better not call one more time or my butt was going to be receiving a boot injection by my father. So I did what any high school kid who was chasing girls instead of going to school would do. I called our telephone provider and had them block the school's number. It worked for quite some time. Probably 4 months. The only I got caught is because my parents were wondering why they hadn't seen a report card in a while so my dad went to visit my school. The school then told them I had a number of report cards that weren't signed and returned which made him inquire about my attendance since I had been doing so well. The school told him my attendance was garbage, so he had some investigating to do. My dad came home, talked to my mom, and they called their prone provider and realized I had indeed blocked the school's number. I never even got in trouble. They thought it was hilarious. My parents still bring it up 15 years later. My daughter is 5. She gets mad at us because her candy is carefully monitored. No more than 3 pieces per day, and no candy after 6pm. Well, she decided to start hoarding candy whenever she could. It started off simply enough, a mini Twix under the pillow, 
A couple of mini Snickers hidden in the sock drawer. My wife found the ones in the sock drawer while getting her clothes ready for the next day, and I found the one under her pillow while tucking her in. She pouted for a while, as expected. Then she seemed to stop. Now any parent out there can tell you. Kids don't just stop without some kind of breaking point. I knew something was going on when she didn't ask for candy on a Saturday. I convinced my wife to take the kids to the park and started searching her room. The brilliant little brat had a stash I couldn't believe. Several mini candy bars taped to the back of her closet, a mini twizzler rolled up in the inside of a pair of socks, a ziplock of jelly beans taped to the back side of her dresser, and a couple of mini Reese's cups tucked in her earring box. The one that surprised me the most though, she took my box tape and stuck a bunch of nerds to a piece of it, then stuck it to the underside of her bed. Just two feet of captured nerds stuck up under there. Some of the tape just had colored dots on them where nerds had previously resided. Apparently she would peel it back a bit, pull a few off, and stick it back up there. Needless to say, the candy was put up high, and we handed her what she picked out from the non. The nerds on the tape though, that is both genius and disgustingly unsanitary. Can I talk about myself? Not sure if I ever was punished but in 4th grade I ran a loan sharking business with attendance points. We got little coupons for attending all week, and could spend them on office supplies and stickers and stuff. I saved mine and started loaning with high interest. By the end of the year I controlled the entire supply and bought out the most expensive reward. No homework passes. Enough to skip homework the last month of school. I just imagine you sending some buff kid to break another kid's kneecaps cause he didn't give you her attendance points in time. Only a few more hours to go before a slideshow called 23 parents reveal the time they had to punish their kids for being geniuses appears on Facebook containing the top 23 responses to this. George Takei's page will share it within a week. Guaranteed. Whenever we would put our middle son to bed, he would cry and vomit. Every night. Cry. Puke. We'd get him up. Clean him. Change the bed clothes and get him back to bed where he would eventually fall asleep. He was a probably around a year and a half old. One night as he was beginning his bedtime cry, I opened the door to check on him. I caught him sticking his fingers down his throat. He looked at me, stopped crying, and gave me the biggest smile. My little brilliant. Beautiful, devious crap head was making himself vomit to get out of bed. He thought it was hilarious. He smiled and started to put his fingers in his mouth again, then he'd pull them out and laugh at our expressions. We didn't punish him, just told him to stop doing it, and he did. He's nearly 11 now, and still gives me a run for my money. <laughs> Dug a hole in the sand in the schoolyard, convinced all his friends to pee in the hole. Convinced kindergartners to play swim in said hole. Actually made me laugh out loud. When my daughter was about 10, she was in the bathroom and had just used lotion. As she left the bathroom, she wiped the wall while turning off the light switch. To her dismay, she noticed where she had touched the wall. The paint had become discolored. She tried removing the discoloration to no avail, so she decided a cover-up was in order. She basically took hand lotion and applied a thin... Even coat across the entire bathroom wall until the entire wall was evenly discolored. I discovered this trying to do touch up painting in the bathroom and noticed that the paint wouldn't stick to the wall. This is about me. In high school pay the rule was that after stretches everyone had to either run the equivalent of one mile around the football field or bike five miles on the stationary bikes. I hated exercise I loathed running. Still do. So I'd always take the bike. Early on a bike broke. Got hauled off to the dumpster and after school I pulled the wreck out of the dumpster to figure out how it worked. Turns out a small magnet on the spoke of the front wheel clocked a sensor once every rotation. I nabbed the magnet and started smuggling it to pay where I'd snap the magnet to the spoke. Turns a 5 mile ride into a 2.5 mile ride. Pay teachers never caught on. As high school went by the pay teachers started to think I was a super gifted athlete that was one day going to win the Tour de France. I was hounded incessantly to join the sports teams and come senior year the pay teachers were pushing all sorts of athletic scholarships on me if only I would join a team. Eventually they got my mom involved because they believed I was wasting my talent and future and not living up to my potential. Finally had to explain to my mom why I couldn't accept any of the offers to join the team. 
She had a good laugh because it's something she would have done in high school too. When I graduated there was a freshman that was tech savvy like me that hated exercise every bit as much as me. I left the magnet in his gym locker. I hope he got the same mileage out of it as me. It's slightly hard for me to believe that people decided you were bound for the Tour de France because you were really good at riding 5 miles on a stationary bike, but good scam nonetheless. This isn't as impressive as some of these, but it made me laugh pretty hard. I remember when my oldest nephew was 2 or 3 he was of course obsessed with cell phones and would play with them non-stop. It got to the point that his parents forbid us from letting him play with our cell phones because they felt it was getting unhealthy. Well, my nephew was upset when my dad told him no, he couldn't play with his cell phone. He threw a small tantrum and then those little arms went up in the air. That little lip went poking out, and he said in his sweet little voice, Hold me. Guamp of course my dad bent over and picked him up only to have a devious smile spread across my nephew's face as his tiny hand shot for my dad's shirt pocket. The same pocket we had both just watched him tuck his phone in. I still laugh when I remember the look of wide-eyed surprise on my dad's face. TLDR. 50 year old man conned by a conniving screen addicted 3 year old. I had timed access controls set on our router so the kids wouldn't be able to stay up all night playing games in their rooms. I had exceptions set that allowed my phone and laptop on 24 stroke 7. My youngest, when he was 12, spoofed the Mac for my phone so he could get Wi-Fi after hours. I found out when I couldn't connect to Wi-Fi one evening after being out of town for a couple of days. I was secretly proud of him. My 5 year old poured paint in her water pistol and painted my car. I couldn't even be mad. I just stared at the car trying to figure out what happened. Then I asked her if she did that. She did. We had a talk about having fun and taking care of things. My daughter at the age of 5 was employing her kindergarten friends to dig up special gems, which were actually just plastic craft sparkle things. Then she was selling the gems to other students for $2 each then going back and paying her little school friends with 50 CIC poles from the canteen. And her friends who found the most gems would earn commission and occasionally would be paid a packet of lollies $1.10. It got to a point where kids were begging to be employed by her as the payment was so good and it created some issues as she had to fire some and employ others. This went on for about 2 months. Until one day my daughter came home with $22. Next day I was called to the school to have a meeting about my daughter's business ventures. Teachers were actually so impressed by her ability to do something like this but it was getting to the point where some kids would spend all their lunch money on these things. That day I had to tell my daughter how incredibly proud of her I am. Because her mind is so advanced but it's not the right thing to do at school. Since then I've told her she can use her skills with my work and she's constantly finding ways to upsell all the clients. Wish I had the skills she has. I hope my kid is this badass. I have 3 sons in Kadurgadon. 4, 2 and 1. When my oldest son want a toy that one of his sibling play with, he will trick them by luring them in another activity, then slip away and take their toy. He pulled that trick on me and I totally fell for it. I was doing a puzzle with my second son, and the oldest light up my computer and open battle net and told me my friend were playing overwatch without me. I stood up to check it out. It was true. I chat a little with them and came back to find a finished puzzle and my oldest one say, now that the puzzle is finished, you have to play with me. This kid know my weakness. He will be a tough opponent. Sorry for my English. Your oldest sounds like he will get through life just fine. Not the parent. But I was definitely one of those kids. My dad worked in IT and therefore had a shit of ways to punish me involving me computers and the like. Any punish he grew at me quickly became an arms race of who could outdo each other. Blacklist my PC IP and I'd replace the network card in my computer. Blacklist my phone IP and I'd install a Wi-Fi card and use that as a hotspot. I didn't have mobile data back then. Admin write on computer and I changed to Linux. Tried to use the computer when I was away and I changed the theme to the most hideously eye bleeding theme with all the animations. Think like those Tumblr blogs that are fluorescent colored and have a shit of music and animations and the layout makes no freaking sense. Heck. I even learnt windings so he couldn't even tell what was what. He gave up when I remote accessed my sister's computer to do stuff on when he made me go back to windows. 
I think I am most impressed that you learned wingdings. My son telling his mum to frick off. He did it on purpose so she won't be annoyed and kick him out so he can come and live with me, which he's wanted for years. He is 8. Got to admire his logic. Over spring break my 10 year old asked for a job to do to make some money. I needed a shallow trench dug between the back of my house to my garden to run a water line. The distance was 83 feet. I was sure he wouldn't complete the whole project by the end of break, so I told him I would pay him $1 a foot, and I would dig the first 5 feet to show him what I wanted. He dug a few feet himself that day and commented on how hard the work was. I was sure I'd be paying out about $10 and that was fine with me. It would keep him busy and he actually does like physical work. The next day I come home from work and my son meets me in the driveway and asks for his $83 in cash. I go around back and the whole trench is dug perfectly to specification. I asked how he did it and he said he got 5 of his friends to come over and help in exchange for $0.50 foot. Lunch would be provided. He had marked off each kid's section. Saving the easy end, no roots or rocks, and soft soil, for himself. He paid out about $25 and pocketed $58 for digging about 30 feet of trench in easy soil and subcontracting the crappy parts to other neighborhood kids. Ultimately I was pretty pumped about this because I got my trench, and I was proud of my kid for recognizing the labor market in our neighborhood, making a good deal and effectively managing the project. The punishment came when I got a phone call from one of the other kid's parents, saying that his kid didn't bring home enough money for the work he did. I eventually found out that when my wife made all the kids lunch, my son brought it out and charged each kid $2 for lunch, and was charging them $0.50 each for a bottle of water. This was not part of the original deal, so I made him give that money back to the other kids, along with a couple extra dollars each. Love all aspects of this. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.